Gay Pride. God is love. This is something that is so very beautiful. Now, if you haven't listened to part one, I encourage you to go back and listen to part one because we're going to continue right here with part number two. Let's look at LGBTQIA+. That acronym, what does that stand for? And I recommend believers and non-believers to know what that stands for so that when your children ask, or even before they ask, you can teach them properly how to handle this situation with God's word. You can talk about Adam and Eve, and it was once said where God put a period, we don't put a question mark. And God is clear about male and female, and you know that people will try to change words, twist things around, they are good at doing that. But there's one thing that stays constant. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will stand forever. Let's look at this acronym. It stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, and the plus holds space for the expanding and new understanding of different parts of various diverse genders and sexual identities. That's really convenient. And you see how things are growing and isn't that how Satan is? We know that the Bible talks about sin growing and growing and it gets darker and darker. And I love the simplicity of God's word. He says there's only two types of wisdom. He also said that there are only two fathers. So we know that if it's not of God, the heavenly father, it is of Satan, the hell's father. And Satan, he's deceiving. He's been doing a good job. He's done a good job of my life in the past. And he still knocks at my door every day. But what are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? And what happens is that you will see that they added that plus. Now, who are they? Well, it's just mere human beings. Some human beings that have an education maybe. Human beings that are people pleasers. And we know that God says, if you strive to please men, you cannot please the Father. So let's look at some scriptures. We have God hates pride. And see, it's so clear. And I'm going to say it's clear to me, but it's not clear to other people. We have the word gay and we have the word pride. We have them even using the rainbow as a symbol of their ungodly and sinful behavior. But what do we do? What do we say? How do we respond? We respond in love. We have the truth. Those who are believers, those who have heard God's word, those who have repented, those who have confessed, those who have been baptized. So you heard, you believe, you repent, you confess, and you had all your sins washed away according to the scriptures. Acts, the second chapter, your sins are washed away and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But does that mean that we're not going to sin again? Absolutely not. That's why in 1 John, we walk in the light as he is in the light, Jesus is in the light. We have fellowship with him and his blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. God is love. He demonstrated his love for all mankind. That's the message. And yes, you can get to people if you can sit down and befriend them. Ask them, hey, would you like to go out for lunch one day? Or you just keep repeating or keep going into the same store. And while you are there, pray. Just ask the Lord, Lord, give me the words. Help your love shine through me. Help your love come out of my mouth. And when 
we are doing that, we will be successful. Now, are they automatically going to run to the church building and dive into the baptistry? No, it doesn't work that way. It's a process. Corinthians, it talks about one person plants, the other person waters, and then God will give the increase. But if no one is planting and no one is watering, how can God give that increase? He has left it up to us each and every day. And I love that analogy. It's like, okay, in one hand, I have some seeds. And in the other hand, I have a bucket of water. And I go and I'm dropping these seeds to different people, not just those who choose to identify with the LGBTQT, but anyone. But this video is targeted to show love to those who are living this kind of sinful lifestyle. And so we know that their house is on fire, so to speak, meaning God is clear that their destination is going to be hell forever. But not only them, heterosexuals too, liars, thieves, murderers, all, everyone. But since it's Gay Pride Month, I figured that, hey, let's talk about showing some love to those who need it most, those who are lost, the many that are flocking too. But don't get me wrong, there are people who are coming out of that lifestyle. Believe you me, I know people. I have contacts in my phone of Christians. They didn't used to live as a Christian lifestyle. They lived full-fledged, sexually active, male, female, male on male, female on female, and a host of other things. So I know God's word will work. We just have to plant and water. Water and plant. Now, I know that some of you feel justified. You have some of your own pride going on that you think that you may be better because your sins are not like their sins. Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse number one. Do not judge or you will be judged. For the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be used against you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. That is very powerful. Let's pray and I will continue this in part three. Father, thank you so very much. We all sin and fall short of your glory, but we're so grateful that we have a loving savior who was willing to die and is willing to die for our sins. It's so beautiful. Regardless of the sin, we know that Jesus will help us, forgive us, wash our sins away as though they never happened. Be with those who are struggling, Father, both those who have chosen to live that kind of lifestyle. And I know, Father, there are those who want out, but they don't see the door. But Jesus, we know, is the door. It is in his name that we pray. Amen.